Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. I am doing another wave painting. This is video number three in the Sissy Artist and Wave, si wave series. Uh, my name's Paul. I'm also known on social media as Sissy Artist. The reason why Sissy Artist, because I was called a sissy when I was a child for being creative. So I'm reclaiming my power and, you know, breaking down some gender norms there, which is all fun. But what I really do that's fun is doing fluid art. And as you can see, I've already started spreading out with the hairdryer the background for my wave. As per usual, and you'll see <laughs> in all of these videos, I... I underestimate the amount of paint that needs to go on the space for these, because they're much bigger canvases. I just, I, I just can't. It, 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 it just doesn't go in. I either do far too much or not enough, and have to mix some more up, which is why there was a gap when I was pouring the paint out. What I'm also doing with this one is experimenting with some areas that will still have the white base coat on, but they won't be quite as fluid. It's the same paint, but it's spread out with my fingers, so it actually forms a thinner layer and will start drying sooner. Um, the reason for that is this area that I'm putting the paint onto, I don't really want much of the wave going onto that. So if you don't want the wave going on that, but you also don't want to have differences in colour if you pour the paint after because this is a um the mixture today is a mix of two whites and PVA glue. Um so yeah. You can just pour it out and then just not blow onto those areas. And we're getting right in with the De La Rowney uh, permanent purple, I think. No, that's not the colour. Uh, you'll, yeah, it'll be in the, in the description box. So I'm doing the rainbow wave in a, um, using the original flag design, original pride flag design, so eight colours, so purple, blue, turquoise, green, yellow, orange, red, and pink. So I've put the blue down and I've just gone in with the turquoise, which is a pearl turquoise by Arteza. And I'm just coming in with the green, which is uh, yellow green by uh, X4 acrylics. The blue is a bright blue. I can't remember the make of it though. And I'm also coming in at this point with some silver in a couple of places. That's CF acrylic silver. Um, it's to act as a bit of a barrier colour between the yellow, red and orange and the green because these colours can far too easily muddy if they mix together, particularly the orange coming over. Um, so you can see, as I'm layering the colours in, they're fairly thin-ish ribbons of colour, and I'm coming in and doing the bits on the crest as well. That will form the crest of the wave. Towards the bottom corner, the paints I do pour out a bit thicker, like as you can see there with the red, um, just because that's got further to travel to get to the edge of the canvas. You can see on this canvas that there is pink around the sides because that's the outer colour. Um, it's actually an opera rose, I think, that I use for the outsides. It's a bit more of a um, opaque colour. But the pink that I've used on the painting is Violet Blue by Pebeo. And the red on this one 
is, I think, Cadmium Red Hue. I know the orange is Cadmium Orange Hue by CF Acrylics, both of those. So I'm coming back in with some more silver just around the edge. I've put gaps in with the paint because I don't want didn't want it all falling over the edge. I wanted to keep the strong bands of colour in the piece. And yeah, at this point I'm just a bit worried that I'm not actually going to reach that edge. So I come in and add some extra bits of paint here and there just to increase the volume of paint so that it can be so that it is there to glide and push over the edge to create the gorgeous kind of pride tie-dye wave effect that we're gonna get which is gonna be awesome one of the things that you always should do when you're doing these paintings is make sure you're happy with the paints that you've got on the canvas if you're not add some more on if there's too much take it off before you start blowing around with the hairdryer um, you just saw hovering over the screen the paint wand the heat wand rather which is an electronic version of a butane torch i'm dyspraxic so an actual mini flamethrower is not a thing that's going to end with no injuries if i'm around so i always use the heat wand it's actually a debossing tool for um uh, card crafts so yeah, adding in some more paints there. I'm actually adding in white at this point because I wanted to have some bits in the painting where it kind of looked like the light was hitting the waves, which the silver would do some of, but not all. And I have also remembered at this point that I forgot to put the um, final colour in the crest, so that's gone on there. You can see the crest is very teeny tiny and thin. It won't stay that way. So as we're going, I'm blowing the piece out. As you can see here, I'm just blowing out the top layer of it. That gives a the gorgeous little purple and white inner bit of the wave that you really want to be you really want to have strong in your piece. And I am blowing around the curve of the wave for the upper part of it. A lot of this, when you have some colour palettes, is going to be managing the colours that you've got, because yellow and pink, muddy. Orange and pink, muddy. Yellow and orange can just end up being orange. Green and orange, muddy. And purple and yellow also muddy as well. So it's it's managing the process so you don't get that muddy result. This piece, as I go through, there are several areas that do muddy a little bit. Um, so I end up taking some paint off adding a bit more paint in, just to make it work. And you can see on this bit, I got part way through, I was still looking at the overall composition, how it's looking. Um, in the top corner there, you can't see it on camera because it's such a big canvas, I'm trying to make that work, so there's still the red in the edge as well as the pink. Um, you know, the rule of thumb is you're supposed to only blow over once. I don't just blow over once, I blow over many, many times as I go through. Um, as you will see in the rest of this recording, I'm just trying to get the kind of wave motion as I'm blowing the colours out, um, which I think I've been pretty successful actually on the initial edge. Then I made the mistake of blowing some green in some orange upwards and that ended up creating a muddy section. 
um, which is obviously not ideal. Then on the edge there, I've got red and pink, but some white in the corner. So I want to um, get the balance a bit more. And as I'm going in, I'm kind of looking at this point, I'm looking at the composition, seeing how I like it. If I don't, I'm adjusting and fixing some bits in the corner off screen. Um, one day I will figure out how to get this to work because the video input when I'm recording this actually does show the whole canvas. For some reason, OBS doesn't take it all when I'm recording because I record on OBS. Um, anyone that's watching, that's a pro. Um, I'm recording using a Razer webcam that gives the actually really good colour results um, onto a and using a Surface laptop to actually record so I can see it in the corner um, as I'm recording. Um, what you can see I'm doing on the edge here is I'm scraping paint off the canvas. Those areas have muddied. There's no, Once an area muddies there's nothing you can do to retrieve it so the best bit that you can do is scrape the colours off and put some colour back in. What I did do is I scraped the colour off, mainly the orange muddied bits, and I only put red and pink back in. I did not put more orange in, apart from in one small section where I could see that it would work. Um, the reason for not putting the orange back in is that was the colour that was causing it to muddy, and there was enough orange already in the piece, and in all honesty, I don't actually particularly like the colour orange. I liked it fine before I was doing fluid acrylics, but the colour orange has ended up ruining far too many pieces. You would have thought that I'd hate the colour green, because that can muddy pieces. Something chronic as well. Um, but I don't... The colour green does not offend me as much as the colour orange does. I had a period, incidentally, when I hated the colour purple, because the paints that I had, I just couldn't get them mixed properly. So they, um, the purple would always sink into the piece. Um, in the background here, because this is a tutorial, we all should be telling you what I'm doing more. Um, I've put some extra bits of the lower colours, so yellow, orange and red, to get those, get that section to balance out. And the green parts, green and turquoise, I've just gone through to add some extra bits in. Looking at the overall composition, I wasn't happy with just having the purple on the edge. So I have gone in to blow some more blue into that. And then also, I lost a bit too much purple, so I've gone back in and added some extra purple in. Um, the one risk that you have if you have a white background is your colour is going to mix in with the white, creating a much lighter shade and less vibrant, and that's obviously not ideal. So you do sometimes have to go in and add a bit more stuff in. Um, I'm adding more white to this just to make sure that the purple has got something to flow over um, to create that wave shape. Because you want the wave to create the curve and then you've kind of got the top of it cut off with the crest rolling in. Um, and now for the fun bit. I'm about to do the crest, so I'm pouring some more white in and just to make, and I put the big blob of white near the end of the crest so that I could get this action. The action is all in your wrist to get the, to get that little curve. I found that if you do the curve first, you can then get the rest of it to work a bit better. And I have a 
very definite view of what I want this quest to look like at the end of it, and this just is not coming out quite how I like. So you're going to see me adding in more of the bits of paint that are left over, but seriously, this looks so cool with the little with the rainbowy effects, it's so amazing. Um, I wanted the quest to be a bit wider at that point, which is why I did the um, blowing out there. What you can also do, and what I tend to do with the Crest of Waves, is I'll pick one colour to have fairly solid on both sides, so that it gives definition to the shape. Um, it's how our eyes process what we see, not how our eyes, how our minds process what we see. If you've got a strong line that will define the shape, um, is what I understand at least. I could be completely wrong. If I'm wrong, just, you know, let me know in the comments, but be polite. So, yeah, I'm just that bit I am putting some more turquoise in because I saw a bit that kind of looked like an eye and I wanted to make sure that that shape re was retained when the as the piece dried. What I'm going for with this is kind of an elephant look. I wanted it to be a bit of a rainbow elephant crest. Um, so and you just heard my stomach rumbling. Um, I'm recording this voiceover just before dinner, so apologies for that. Um, so yeah, I wanted the rainbow really to come in, and I wanted a bit more of a shape of the ear of the elephant. So this is my first attempt at creating a pop of colour that will kind of, towards the edge of the canvas, create a bit more of an ear shape. And we're going to see how successful that was. Kind of works, but is a bit pale. So what I end up doing is pouring the pink and the red just a couple of dollops of that. You don't need a lot of paint to do these sort of effects um, when you've got a base coat on there. More red, more pink, and there we go. So you can kind of see the ear flap starting, I think, on this piece. You'll see in a minute when we show the dried result, as I love this piece so much that I actually, um, you're seeing me fiddling with the edge of the canvas there, um, that's because it's a very large canvas. I leant over it and got my t-shirt on the edge. There are two ways that you can fix something like that. You're if you're doing a design that you can tilt some paint off, you just kind of lift the canvas up a bit, tilt it so it pulls some more stuff pours over the edge. Or what I did there was I just put some more colour down and used a straw to blow it over the edge. That way it looks you, you won't be able to tell that it wasn't always that way. So yeah, this is pretty much done at this point. I'm still assessing the overall composition and probably taking photographs because I do take photos as it's done. And then the final bit is where I come in with the soap and water solution to create the little champagne cells that are just amazing and as you can see it is an amazing result um, that's on a storage thing in my back garden which the storage is on a slight slope which is why it doesn't 
quite work against the fence. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe and watch one of the other series that are showing on the side. Bye!